In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly highlight objects in OpenGL. First, I want to show you what is the context of uh, this video. Recently, I was working on a side uh, personal project, which is a, a simple 3D editor. So, object highlighting is a very common feature in all kinds of 3D editors. And I already, I already found a few methods. Uh, for example, you can find one, one method in chapter 23 of the Learn OpenGL book. If you, are, if you are learning OpenGL and you have not heard of uh, this book, I strongly recommend you to read this book. It really deserves your time. And I, I also found a few discussions online when I Google how to do it properly. And I found this uh, found this website. Here you can you can see a few guys proposed a few methods, but uh, they are they are all similar to to the method pro proposed in the book of Open Learn OpenGL. So first I want to show you what is the user approach of object highlighting. So if you are familiar with, with this, you can skip this section. So normally it has three steps. First, you render objects with the stencil buffer disabled, like this. This is the normal objects. So next, you render the selected objects with stencil buffer enabled. For example, the circle is selected. And uh, you enable the stencil buffer so you can see the uh, circle in the stencil buffer, like this. So only this circle is enabled. So you only see this circle uh, in the stencil buffer. And the next step, you, you scale the object up a little bit. So you can see you draw a larger circle with the highlighting color. And here is the yellow. Then you disable stencil buffer and draw this object. But this time, you apply the mask of the stencil buffer. So only the zero, zero stem buffer is, over, is overwritten. So here, you see the final result. So in this way, you can see some highlighted uh, effects. And uh, now I want to show you what is uh, uh, the the uh, what is the implementation of my rendering engine. So this is the rendering engine I was working on. It has the yeah, it has the sky dome and the ground. Here I load a few objects. Now you can select an object. It's indeed highlighted. But when you when you zoom in or zoom out, you see this color is very coarse and also it didn't fully cover the this wheels. This is because the center of this object is not the geometry center. So, for example, if the center of this wheel is somewhere here, when you scale it up, it will, or the rendered pixels will move to the left a bit. So that's what you see, something like this. And also, when you rotate the object, some part, some part is very very thick, and this. It's not covered, so this gives you very, very coarse results. So here we have observed two issues. First, the scale doesn't work well when you zoom in or zoom out. And also, the highlighted area doesn't fully cover the objects. 
the next step is uh, how to improve this highlighting method. A very natural way is to enlarge the rendered object isometrically. So if you know computer region, that is called dilation. And here is an example in OpenCV. If you are not familiar with dilation, you can go to this website and have a look. Here I just briefly summarize what is going here. So this is the original image. After you apply the dilation operation, you get a isometrically enlarged object. And this is the key operation here, this line. Basically, it applies a kernel to each pixel of this image, and the kernel operation is like this. If you read this carefully, it's very simple. It finds the largest pixel value of its neighbors. So we can easily apply this. Uh, we can easily apply this operation in the shader. So this is the shader of a dilation operation. It's pretty simple. You set the radius of a, of the kernel, then you loop each pixel, and you find, and you check if the color is is not black. If it's not black, then you fill the pixel with that value. The next question is how to implement this. You may think directly edit the stencil buffer, but uh, it's not possible as far as I know. Only the vertex shader can write to stencil buffer. And now let's go back to the user approach. We render borders in the second pass using stencil buffer. And the solution here is to inverse the operation. In the next slides, I will show you how to, how to do this step by step. To render the object borders, we need multiple render targets. So here, this is the main, main render target. We render all the objects. And similarly, we we render the selected object with stencil buffer enabled. And this is the render target A. And next, we have a render target B. In target B, we on, we only render this object with the highlighting color. Next, we have a target C. In target C, we directly we apply the dilation shader here. So in this way, we can direct the highlighted objects by radius. So so here you can have a larger objects. And the next step is, uh, is to implement another render target D. In render tar in target D, we, we blend target C and target A. So when target C has a valid pixel, we use, we use the pixel value for that pixel. Otherwise, we use the pixel from the background image, target A. So this is the final output. So this is the, this is a very simple binary blending. We can or we can also implement this in a simple shader. If you are interested in the shader, I can show you what it looks like. Yeah, it's very very simple. Just check if the RGB 
pixel values are non-zero. If it's non-zero, you use you use it. Otherwise, you use the background pixel. And here comes the final step. We render target A again, but with the stencil buffer disabled. And this, you can you can think this image as the, the stencil buffer of target A. As I said, you only enable stencil buffer when you render the selected object. So you blend the target A and the target D here. When the target when the stencil buffer is zero, you use the pixel values from target D. Otherwise, you use the pixel from target A. So in this way, you can get the final image with a very nice contour of the borders of the object. Yes, that's it. Now I want to show you the demo of the proposed method. It's the same scenario with the three objects. Now you can select the object. Now if you look at the selected object, the borders have the same thickness. And also when you zoom in, zoom out, it always has the same thickness. So this, this, sec this selection is a lot better than the previous method. You can see it. See? So this is the final result. In this video, I also want to thank the Learn OpenGL book and also the CL engine, which is also written by the author of a Learn OpenGL book. Thanks for watching.